he found two weapons that they used. The first weapon was materialism, to make people think that religion was superstition and, and a foolish thing to believe. And, and he said their, their, their tools for doing this became very powerful with a lot of the material sciences that they developed. But the second tool that they used was nationalism. So he said to destroy Turkey from within, they, they used materialism. But to destroy uh, Turkey from without, they used nationalism. So that the, the places where the Turks were protecting, like Palestine, suddenly the people in Palestine saw the Turks as occupiers. And people forget that Arabs fought against the Turks. They allied with the British and fought against the Turks. And the British promised them all these things. And much of what we're suffering now is from the betrayal of Muslims of that time. So these are the effects, and nobody wants to deal with what really happened. They just want to blame everybody else. You know, it's all somebody else's fault. But unfortunately, we inherit the troubles of the past. We inherit them. The only country that didn't, of the Arab states that were under, the only one that didn't break their ties was the Libyans. They were the only one, which is why the, the Turks really loved the Libyans. In 1958, King Idris came here and actually restored the maqam of Abu Ayyub al Ansari. There's a big plaque there, 1958. A plaque that says that he came, he saw that it was in disarray because it was a period where they weren't really respecting these places as much anymore, and he redid it. But then the Libyans, in their Thawra Thawra, Ibris wala Idris, with their slogan, give us Iblis and not Idris, they overthrew a man who used to do night prayers. And I know this because I know somebody who knew him personally very well, uh, Mustafa bin Halim, who was his ambassador to Italy who told me that he was one of the most pious people he knew. This was the man that was ruling their country. They overthrew him, Iblis wala Idris, they got Iblis, and, and then they overthrew this guy, you know, and now there's a thousand Iblises. And this is, this is what revolution, this is what he's saying. Everybody loses. Everybody loses. So we have to understand these things at a deeper level and not be fooled by slogans. One of the things that the Prophet ﷺ said, that towards the end, he said, there's going to be sununa khada'a. There will be years of deception. Yu'tamin al the The treasonous one will be considered trustworthy. Wa yukhawun al amin And the trustworthy one will be called a treasonous one. Yukadib al-sadiq. The one telling the truth will be deemed a liar. وَيُصَدَّقَ الْكَادِبِ And the one being called, uh, 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 the, the liar will be called a truthful one. This is what our Prophet warned us. So we have to be vigilant about what's being done to us as a, a community. The Muslims, the, you know, our natural allies should be the Christians amongst this materialism. But there are people that want to make sure the Muslims and the Christians never, this is the Iago factor. Shakespeare's play about... Uh, about Iago, Santiago Matamoros. He was called Saint Iago, the Moor killer. He was the Spanish patron saint of killing Muslims. And Shakespeare did this play with uh, a, a Moor, Othello, Othel, it's an Arabic name, Othello, and, and Desdemona, the European and the Moor, coming together in a marriage. But Iago saying, no, we're not going to let this happen. Some people say that this was because Mansur al-Dahabi, the great Moroccan, sent his ambassador, Abd al-Wahid al-Fasi, uh, in, in, in uh, 1600, he sent him to Queen Elizabeth's court to convince uh, the Protestant Christians to ally with the Moroccan Muslims against Spain. So the Spanish, Iago, that's why he calls him Iago, because he's Spanish, Santiago. The Spanish didn't want this alliance to happen because uh, Mansour wanted to arrest the Americas from the Spanish and, and have Muslims and, uh, and English um, take, take over from the Spanish. This was the idea. Uh, but he died in 1603, so uh, it didn't come from that. But anyway, the point is, is there, there are people that don't want these religions to work together against the common enemy of atheism and materialism. 
These are much greater enemies. Christians believe in the day of judgment. They believe in the Ten Commandments. Our, our ethics is based on the Ten Commandments. Read the Ali Imran, right? 151, 152, 153. Read those verses. That's the Ten Commandments. Those are the Ten Commandments in the Quran, which our ulama said those are the wasai al ashara lati utiya Musa. And immediately after those verses, it said, Athena Musa al Kitab. We gave Musa the book. This was Musa's. Musa brought the Ten Commandments. This was the, 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 the ethics of our civilization. The Jewish, the Christian, and the Muslim civilization. These are the Abrahamic faiths. We're in the umbrella of Abraham. The two greatest religions on the planet, Islam and Christianity, share the Ten Commandments. And now the Ten Commandments are being completely eradicated. There's a, a website, Ashley Madison. Life is short, have an affair. It has 37 million followers. And it's a, a website that promotes adultery. It's, it's, a, it's, it's, it's valued at a billion dollars. This is destroying our civilization. This is Iblis destroying our civilization. And then mocking God. God will not be mocked. You know? The mockers of God. We don't want, the Christians don't want God mocked. We don't want God mocked. But the people don't want these, these alliances of virtue. The Prophet said, Du'utu ila hilf al fudur. Qabl al Islam. I was called to an alliance in Jahiliyyah. If I was called to it in Islam, I would respond. In other words, if people from some other faith said, let's ally for virtue, then I would ally with them. So, now, 